We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right. I'm pretty sore, but I'm all right. How are you doing, Jared? Sore. Yeah. Sore. Sore, sore from what? Yes. Sore from working out. Sore from a kickball tournament. Yeah. I'm sore today. <laughs> Kyle being active again. I know. What I is know. this, 2008? I did kick some balls, and I caught some balls, too. And <laughs> threw some balls. I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. Oh, Austin, Austin, Austin. That's a, that's a dirty joke for, for anyone who knows. Um, Kyle McGraw, yo, you got to take that joke back. Man, that was a, those were two bad jokes, but bad for to totally different reasons, you guys. <laughs> All right, let's, let's jump right into it, Jared. We are officially in the wasteland. Yeah, this is our, are... this is our summer series. We were, we're officially out of spring camp and we've been out of spring camp for a while, but we just haven't, we have even just done like one of our general episodes, which is essentially what these are, you know, sort of stand in for. Um, we haven't done one of our general episodes in a couple of weeks. Uh, so, uh, welcome to the wasteland. This is our summer yeah. series. Yeah. I, I feel like this year's wasteland is going to be Bad. a lot more typical, like a, like a, what we usually have every year for wasteland last year was definitely nominally with uh <laughs> it just seemed like there was news every week during the summer well, which is really odd well you had a, a few things going on last year which was essentially like recruiting was entertaining all last year because normally when there was a blackout date for recruiting and contact and stuff like that mm -hmm. all that got moved around because of covid and whatnot and we had the jtt drama yes gangland we had the uh, jtt drama all going on um we never talked about all that urban stuff though did we not, um, not a lot i mean we mentioned it but not a, not a lot yeah, yeah so i mean uh yeah and that and as gangland says that and then was you, mostly and in then the, the whole and then the whole um quinn ewers thing that was happening in July and then August as well. So that that um, a lot of people were talking about Quinn Ewers joining early. Um, yeah, it was it was a very entertaining summer last year. But well, that was last Speaking year. Speaking of Quinn Ewers, uh, we're we're talking about NIL today. <laughs> yes, uh, good segue. Yes, yes. <laughs> Speaking of NIL, professional <laughs> Quinn podcasters. <Ewers>. <laughs> Yes, money talks. Um, money talks indeed. So, yep, we're going to talk about NIL. Uh, er, wow, I can't believe I about said that again. <laughs> Coach Day, Coach Ryan Day, uh, talked to um, some talked last week uh, about NIL money, and pretty much just laid it out there and said, "Hey, for those that are listening, we need to raise about." He says about thirteen million dollars to keep 13, their football roster together. Thirteen. This was put. This was put together dollars. by. Um, what was that? I was just echoing you. It's fine. Keep going. Ah. Uh, yeah. This was. This was. Um. Um. We're looking at an article from. Uh. From Cleveland. dot com. Uh. By the one and only Doug. Um. So we're we're gonna pull a lot of uh different quotes from here. Uh, yeah, a lot of just a lot of interesting things from Ryan Day and him trying to try to stay ahead of this all, which which you're starting to see a lot of the elite schools like, you know, Nick Saban's already on top of this, too. And Ryan Day's. Yeah, Ryan Day's following suit here and uh, just laying it all out there. Kyle, uh, I'm sorry. Are you suggesting that maybe Nick Saban has put some thought into NIL? Man, what a what a bad week for us to take a week off with all him and the Jimbo Fisher stuff happening. Ah, oh, that's <laughs> we could have made an episode out of that. Yeah, that should have been our first wasteland episode, but we took that week off. Uh, yeah. Um, so, so, so if you break down thirteen million dollars, eighty five um, of eighty five uh, scholarship football team. 
averages to about 150,000 per player. That's not Just too not, shabby. Yeah, <laughs> but that's also, but, but that's, but that's not how it's going to happen. It's yeah. not. No. <laughs> but, Gangland but he, he says, says best, make it more better. like 13 million over 30 kids. Uh, well, and by close. the way, that's, that's pretty close. Well, yeah, he, he said here, the better calculation is going to be something similar to about about half a million each for about 26 guys. Which that was, I think, yeah, I that's, think that's Doug's. Right. Was that Doug's yeah. estimation or was that yes. Ryan? Okay. No, that, that was, that was Doug's. That was okay. Doug's um, article here. Well, uh, and I so, know that Ohio state does have plans because they outlined them back when the NIL stuff first became to, to, to make sure that like the quote unquote other players uh, the the non stars, I guess, if you will, um, still get money. Like if they do something, where like do an autograph session at a car dealership. That you know the car dealership would, as a part of a package, yes, get like some anchor names, you know, uh, a C.J. Stroud or whoever, right? But th then that would also come with some pretty good players who maybe aren't like one of the top 10 best players, but still some really good players. And then also some other players yet just to help spread that money around. Like I know they were talking about doing stuff like that, where you couldn't, if you went through the school, couldn't like just get CJ Stroud. You, you would get like a whole package of players of different popularity levels. Yeah. And also on here, uh, he mentions here about, uh, Again, per the uh, Doug Doug's article on Cleveland.com, um, he said he believes right now a top shelf quarterback would need about two million dollars in NIL money, then a now major offense major t offensive tackle and edge rusher would be about a, about a million each. Now wait a minute, I think that number did come from those numbers did come from Ryan Day, did they not? Um, per Ryan Day, yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I don't know uh, if, if you're wondering how much CJ Stroud's making. Well, <laughs> he didn't say CJ's name, but you, you can, it's, it's real. Not, it's really, you don't, you don't need, you don't got to think about that one too hard. And neither, you don't got to think about that one too say, hard. That's uh, JTT or Jack Sawyer either. <laughs> no, uh, but yeah, it's, yeah, that's you. There, there you go. And by the way, there, there are also, a, according to Ryan Day, um, three of your most important, especially from a recruiting standpoint, which is what we're talking about here. Three of your most important player types, your quarterback, your offensive tackle, your defensive end. Sawyer has to be making cake as a local guy. I would think so. Um, you know, you sort of add the Pickerington product uh aspect to it on top of on top of everything else yeah i would think so so this is this is something interesting too so i'm just going to kind of i'm just going to read uh right from the article here uh pretty much telling all the potential donors uh that every player on the team could go in the transfer portal when the season ends and then field calls from other schools who might be offered NIL deals. Players may feel that they have to take the money to help their families unless Ohio State can offer enough to keep them here. One phone call, uh, quoted from Brian Day, and they're out the door. We cannot let that happen at Ohio State. I'm not trying to sound the alarm. I'm just trying to be transparent about what we're dealing with. And again, uh, he doesn't mention Quinn Ewers by name. <laughs> but <laughs> uh goes back to alfred talking about people trying to pick our running backs yeah okay ju just so we're clear nil is legal now okay all right but you know what's not legal basically offering money to someone who's not on your team so like there, there, there are gray areas here. You're, you're also not allowed to just 
offer a position on your team to someone who's not in the transfer portal. That is tampering. So uh, Ryan Day is calling people a bunch of fucking cheaters right now. Just if again, he didn't, he didn't say fucking cheaters. <laughs> Ryan Day is classy. He didn't say that. Not publicly. I'll say it for him. I'll say it for him. There's a bunch of fucking cheaters out there because two things you're not supposed to be doing is offering scholarships to people who are not in the transfer portal. That is against the rules. And you're also not a be you're also not allowed to be talking about specific numbers or specific NIL deals to players who are not on the team. Mm-hmm. Also, so also it's one on thing. Here. Well, just just uh, hold on. It's it's one thing to be like, hey, here at Ohio State, CJ Stroud is making this much money. If you become our starting quarterback you could potentially see you making similar money. If you become the starting quarterback at Ohio state, that's legal. It is legal to say that, you know, this is how much a starting defensive end has made, you know, fast forward a few years, right? Historically at our program, this is how much money this is that. How many, but this is the total amount of money we bring in. And I, the NIL, contributes to the team. Th- these are legal things to talk about. It's not legal to say, Mr. Kyle, um, if you sign with Ohio State this offseason, uh, we have Abbott Labs and Rogue and uh, Nike prepared to offer you $300,000 each. That's not legal. The guarantee of money versus this is the amount of money that current players are making and the amount of money that you could be making. You see, is, is I feel like a lot of people don't understand that there are the, the nuances between those two scenarios, or at least no one's explained it to them. It's okay yeah. to talk about numbers in general. Generally, it's okay to talk about historically the numbers that the program or individual players have brought in. It's not okay to say, there is a contract waiting for you if you join this team. Yeah. And, and similar to, it's also illegal to demand that a player stays. So it says here, no NIL deal can demand that a player to stay at Ohio State in order to be paid. That is correct, except, um, again, that's that's if the team... Yep, or step a, bo- or step bonus like if you don't if I happen you don't, to know for I happen to know for a fact that a certain quarterback yeah. uh, had to give back a car to a or a truck rather uh to a certain car dealership yeah. based off of his based off of his deal. Yeah. So yeah, yeah they can't die to, yeah. It can't directly be tied for performance like like throwing or running for so many yards or sacks for the year or touchdowns or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, because at that, yeah, you can't do that. Um, and, and as Austin says, you can't make contract offers, but you can make contract extensions. But this part's important. Once they're on the team, once they are on the team, your team, <laughs> your team, <laughs> not someone else's team. All right, Kyle. Uh, what what do you got next? Uh, uh, well, actually, uh, I think this is pretty related. Um, is uh, Gene Smith. Uh, so leading up to this, Doug says, Ohio State, as it often does, is trying to occupy a middle ground on a 30 minute panel featuring Ryan Day, athletic director Gene Smith and Cor- and Carrie Holt, uh, the senior associate AD overlooking the NIL efforts. Smith, Smith referenced schools that are basically directly paying recruits through NIL right now, which is illegal, just, just so we're clear. He's saying that, once again, uh, Key and Peel used to have a sketch where they'd be the anger translator uh, for the president. So again, so if I'm going to be the if I'm going to be the anger translator here for Gene Smith, 
fucking cheating. Yeah. It, yeah, they're just like Jared said, technically it's not allowed by NCAAs, but it's not really being enforced at the moment. What? NCAA is not enforcing its own rules? Kyle, shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Um, uh, they're basically directly playing through NAL right now, which isn't technically allowed by NCAA Rays, but it isn't currently being enforced at all. Uh, quote, unscrupulous characters are good at what they do and it's always been that way so again a anger anger translation yeah they're cheating but what the fuck's new about that so it's just it's just college football it's like yeah people are cheating but you know people have always cheated um and ohio state's gonna do everything they can as doug point out doug says if I can translate Doug now, Ohio State is often done is trying to occupy a middle ground. Well, Ohio State's going to bump up against the rules. They're not going to break the rules. I it, 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 unless you were wearing a sweater vest, um, you're not going to break I'm, the I'm, rules. Yeah, not going to break I'm, the I'm rules, loved. but we're going to bump up against the rules. We're going to stretch the rules. We're going to see exactly. what we can get away with within the rules. But we, we are going to play by the rules. Exactly what Doug Doug was saying in his article here. The speed, Ryan Day says, if the speed limit's 45, you drive yeah, 45 yeah. miles an hour, yeah, a yeah. lot of people are going to pass you. If you're yeah, going yeah. too fast, you're going to get pulled over. And then Doug says, yeah, yeah. so what is the middle ground? Is that 53 miles an hour or maybe yeah. 57 if it's good weather and the roads are empty? But in the right lane, never in the left lane. <laughs> You know, I've always said that the speed limit is what the flow of traffic is doing. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. That, that's, that's always been, that's always been my feel. You Bingo. can go 69 in Florida. Uh, you, you know, no one's stopping you. <laughs> it's Florida. <laughs> if 69 were a state, it would be Florida. But yeah, it's, it's going to be really interesting to see how this whole NIL is going to shape out to be, but you're, as we're seeing here, we're a lot of, a lot of schools are already trying to, trying to mold their program in anticipation of the future of the transfer portal and the NIL of what it can be moving forward. And they're just setting themselves up for success. Anything else, anything else you got about the NIL, your your thoughts, or opinions about it and anything or anything that Ryan Day mentioned that kind of um, grabbed your attention? Um, no, but I, I, once again, so but in case you're wondering, how did the national media feel about this? Um, if, you, if you sort of took a look at some of the reactions on Twitter, um. There was a lot of, I think, people essentially saying, yeah, pretty like this is, yeah, this is what we're, yeah, this is, they came out and called day week, didn't they? No, not at all. Um, a lot of people were just like, oh, well, at least someone is just saying this publicly. That, that, that was it. It was, I think it was once again, like, and uh, just to apl applaud Ryan Day, not just for this, but for, um, just just generally the way Ohio State has operated underneath Ryan Day. Um, transparency. And I, I think that I think that if, if I can just like why what the general attitude of Ryan Day, uh, the reaction to to Ryan Day, basically saying a quarterback is worth two million dollars, uh, an offensive a top flight offensive tackle, a top right pass rusher. They're worth about a million dollars. A lot of people were just like, well, at least someone's saying it out loud. You know what I mean? Like, at least we're being transparent. And, and I think that that's the word. Like, Ryan Day and Ohio State under Ryan Day has, I would say, has uh, uh, lost lost whatever word I was trying to, operated, operated um, transparently. And I think that that's a thing that should be applauded. Like, we can go back to... Um, Last season with everything with the massage therapist up in Cleveland and and 
of that whole situation. And a lot of people are like, oh, why, why are they making this pub? Why are they, what, wh- who are they? Why, why? They should have. Why is this public? Why did? Uh, but why is they making such a big deal about this? This is making the program look bad, and uh, all and like people are fucking lighting lighting their hair on fire. Not everyone. Most people applauded it, but there's just those those people, and it's just like because they were operating transparently. When you when you worry more about the image of a program and you worry more about how people might interpret something going on within a program, that's the slippery slope that leads you to Joe Pa. That is the slippery slope. Welcome, Kabuto. That is the slippery slope that leads you to Joe Pa. So yeah, be public. Be transparent. And I would just say that Ryan Day has been fantastic at running Ohio State transparently. And I appreciate that. Um, God, I can't wait for Ryan Day to beat the fuck out of Harbaugh. Yeah, me too. By the way, oh, hold on. I need to find this. Um, they're in compa- So we got this huge thing uh, with three people talking to Ohio State boosters about... You know, what are we doing as far as NIL and everything else? And we got all of this stuff going on. You know, Ohio State has its plan. Ohio State's doing this. Ohio State's doing that. Um, and then we got something uh, to con- to contrast that. I want nothing to do with Joe Paw's slippery slope. Austin, did you just say something nice about me? Um, um, man, I wish I could find it. Uh, hey, Kyle, can you, I tell you what, Kyle, uh, can you maybe uh, check out the ask sleep cast questions while I look for this and see if there's one or two, um, yeah, let me let me pull up the list real quick here. Uh, oh, here's a good here's a good one. Um, which team finishes which in the Big Ten East? What is your rankings? That's not first, second, and third. Who's who's going to finish fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh in uh, Big Ten East? Fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Yes. Hmm. Fourth. Okay, so I mean, all right. Ohio State. Then still probably Michigan. Um, so I'm 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 going to go with in this order. I'm going to go with. Um. That stuff. I'm going to go with Penn State, then and Rutgers, and then, then Maryland, and then Indiana. Really, Indiana last? Mm-hmm. Really? Yep. I like Indiana more than I like Maryland. Uh, Austin says Ohio State, Michigan, PSU, MSU, Rutgers, Indy, Maryland. Um, I think I might swap MSU and in, in PSU, Austin. But outside of that, we agree. Um, but yeah, I think I'll with you almost did. Yeah, I, I honestly, it's pretty close. It's 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 honestly pretty close. Um. So yeah, I mean we could we could just say tie there and agree. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, let's see. How close are we from seeing the Big Ten finally ending this ferocious divisional structure? I wish I had an answer for you on that. Um, yeah. A year, uh, two years, a year or two, maybe. Um, I, I I feel like. 
I almost feel like it'll come along with a playoff expansion. Like, I feel like change like that tends to happen like all at once. Where it's just like things are normal, things are normal, things are normal. Boom, change. Um, it's already happened. What's well, already happened? Wait a minute. Are other conferences? Uh, well, no. Um, has it? I mean, the the Big Twelve technically, but that's just because. That that happened after they got shrunk. So I don't know if that I mean they got forced into that. Everyone else still has divisions, right? SEC is losing them as soon as possible. I mean but they haven't yet. And they don't have a timetable yet. So not as soon yeah. as possible. It could have happened already if they wanted it to. By the way, uh, I found it. Jim Harbaugh on NIL. So I just want to compare and contrast. This is Jim Harbaugh on NIL. Our philosophy is that coming to the University of Michigan is going to be a transformal experience rather than a transactional experience. Which yeah, is the Jimmy most Herbs? Michigan thing I have ever heard in my life. Yeah, Jimmy Harbs. Can we yeah. get a free two liter of Pepsi to go with that? <laughs> Is the some scholarship tickets. some tickets? Is the scholarship awful scholarship offer include a free Pepsi? He adds the following: I've always been for student athletes being able to profit off their name, image, likeness. It just makes sense. I think we can all agree that's something that's fair and right. I mean, okay, but that that com we've we're past that, <laughs> Jimmy. We're we're a couple like a years year, past that, that conversation. Ago. That was a year ago, Jamie Harbs. This is 2022 right now. Yeah, it's we're 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 past if anyone's for it or against it. Like for it or against it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. The the toothpaste has left the bottle, Jimmy Harbs. That's not the conversation anymore. <laughs> hmm. All right, Jared. Anything else? Anything else about the NIL here, or should we? Wrap it up for this episode. Um, will any new college football game be disappointing? Sure to impossible. Uh, I I think it's going to be disappointing. It will be. I like. I know. I know. Like we've all wanted an NCAA game back, but y'all y'all see what Madden has turned into in recent years. As long as it's not a Madden clone, it will absolutely be a Madden clone. You think EA, you, you think EA is going to write a new game from scratch? Or do you think they're just going to reskin Madden? It's a different dev team. That's true. Yeah. Well, uh, you know. They they got they got two years. They got two years, Jared. I feel like two years is just to get all the 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 logos and the jerseys and the stadium textures. I don't know, man. I just I'll believe it when I see it. Don't say anything about the yard the wife can hear. Should I not have read that out loud? <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, Jared, that, that's it. That is it for our, for our episode for today. They poached a lot of the devs from college football revamped. Really? Well, I mean, hey, guys, don't get my hopes up. Like I guess get two my years. hopes up. You got, you got two years. Don't get my hopes up. That, that's all. I, I mean, hey, I haven't played, I haven't played a video game, uh, a, a football video game in many years. It's been a very long time. Um, Probably since the last NCAA for me. <laughs> I, I don't think I played Madden more than a year or two after that. So probably, yeah. But it will exist. 
Jared, if the game yes. comes out, can promise you to do an oh, OSU yeah. dynasty. Oh yeah, if can Jared promise will, to do I it. Will. Yeah, if Jared will, I will. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it on. Um, I'll do it. I'll do it like on Twitch or something like that. I'll, I'll do. I'll do something, and then we can all watch. Oh yeah, you, I, I guess YouTube too. I, I'm not familiar with streaming on YouTube, but I, we can figure it out. I got two years. <laughs> but you are familiar with streaming on Twitch. Yeah, I, I tested it a few times. Oh no shit! Shit, Jared. Okay. <laughs> yeah, big pocketed recruiters. Austin, you 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 got to stop being so mean, my man. Um. <laughs> Ooh. All right, yeah, yeah. End of the episode. End of the episode. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? I uh, actually, I do, Jared. Okay. I do. Uh, Nick is it Mangle. About a certain former no, Ohio State center. It is. <laughs> Nick Mangold going to be into the Jets Ring of Honor for That's his uh, eleven for his eleven years at, as a Jets. Yeah, uh, it's a. It's. A, I mean. I mean, it's a ring of honor. That's, that's huge. That's enormous. Yeah. Um, and also Jared, uh, Denzel Burke looking like he's, um, going to be wearing a different number this year. Going yeah. From, I was wondering. Um, number 29. I was really wondering. Going from number 29 to five. Yeah. I, I it was, it was very curious. Cause like, once the spring hit and we started getting new Jersey numbers, one of the first names I looked for was Denzel Burks. And like, there's zero chance now he's wearing 29 again, but then he wore it all spring. And I'm like, is, maybe he has some, uh, maybe he has some attachment to 29. Maybe it's a family number or something. I don't know. Um, but no, he's, 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 he's picked up his single digit. He's going back to the single digit now. Yeah. Who was five before? Uh, was there one on the defensive side? Um, the age Jared peaked. I that that might be accurate. I was about to defend myself, but uh, that that I mean peaked in what sense? Like, there's no single peak. If you're talking about like my physical peak, uh, you're several. You're giving me several years too much credit on that. That that is correct, Marcus Williamson. Yeah. But he was gone before. Like I just, I, I just expected this would have come in the spring instead of now. That's all. Yeah. All right. That's it, Jared. That's it for for today. All right, um, guys. Uh, they were gone for a while, and you know when you follow like very small bands, like I follow very small bands. You know, sort of paying attention to the local scene and whatnot. So those bands just disappear. Sometimes they just disappear. Uh, you know, when they break up, it doesn't make the news. It doesn't make it on social media. Um, it, it, sometimes the band just disappears and, you, and you're wondering what's happened. And I was starting to fear because I hadn't heard from them in a while. Live shows, new singles or anything. I was playing to Vapors is one of my favorites local. Um, they're one of my favorite locals uh, of, of all time. And I was just like, oh man, did they, they disappear on me? And then I got an alert on my bands in town app. They have a new EP dropping. They have a show. Uh, they scheduled a show at Ace of Cups, which is in North campus. If you've never been. Um, and we love playing as, as Austin said, we love playing the vapors here. And I was just very, very happy to find out that they weren't gone, that they're, they're still here. They're still around. Uh, if, and there's new music and a live show, I bought the tickets immediately. So, um, I don't know if you give a shit and you want to come meet me, I'll be at Ace of Cups for that, for that playing the vapor show. Um, now tell everyone you're, a. now I'm not finishing that sentence. So, uh, in celebration, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, do some playing the vapors tonight. So, uh, hey, Austin, you want to pick the song?
Yes, you, yes, he does. <laughs> to be fair, they're called vapors. So, of course, they disappeared, but they're back. They have uh, they, they, they have condensated. Uh, that can't be the right word. Uh, they <laughs> condensed. Sublimated. Is that the right word? Uh, and, and then the, the, they're back. They're back. Um, desert lights. I don't know what you're talking about right now, Stuart. Um, so yeah, tonight's playing the vapors. Uh, the name of this song is desert lights. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is playing the vapors. Mm -hmm. 